Well, the Democratic National Committee, the DNC, considering formally nominating President Biden as early as this month, according to Bloomberg. This would guarantee the president is on the November ballot and help end conversations of replacing him after last week's debate performance. To discuss, Yahoo Finance's own Rick Newman is here. Rick, what do we know? Of course, this comes after a lackluster performance that we saw last week. You're being very kind, Brad. I would I say try. it was a terrible performance by Biden. <laughs> but uh, so normally uh, this would happen. Uh, they would officially nominate uh, their candidate, President Biden in this case, at the convention itself. The, the, the Democratic convention doesn't start until August 19. So why are they talking about possibly uh, nominating him in, in mid-July, a month or so early? Well, the, the sort of um, official reason is there are some technicalities about whether Biden can get on the uh, ballot in Ohio. Um, so they say if we nominate him uh, that a little bit earlier, that takes care of that and won't be a problem. But of course, this comes as there were these sudden, uh, you know, insistences that Biden consider withdrawing from the uh, from the race after he did so poorly last week in the debate, and he forgot his forgot his words and stumbled and couldn't finish a lot of his thoughts. So I guess the idea is if we just make this a fait accompli that he is the nominee in mid-July, then maybe that will end all these demands for uh, the Democrats to find somebody else. I'm not sure that that will actually work. Um, so yes, he can become the nominee, but Biden can always withdraw. I mean, it's not like um, once he is officially the nominee, if he if he drips into a drifts into a coma or something, he remains a nominee. I mean, they, there are still mechanisms to remove him. So I guess they're just hoping that this would show some unity among the Democratic Party and maybe quiet down some of those calls. I'm not sure that is going to work necessarily. I also want to get your take, Rick, on uh, the Supreme Court ruling on former President Donald Trump that he has immunity from prosecution for, quote, official acts. What does that leave him in terms of options for the legal battles he is currently facing, including a past legal battle with his hush money trial here in New York? It doesn't it doesn't affect the hush money trial at all. Um, that is that is a state uh, and a city uh, court, not federal, not a federal trial. Um, and it does not relate to his actions as president. That uh, that relates to actions that Trump did, uh, did before he became president. Trump has appealed that ruling, which everybody expected him to do. So that is underway. And the next thing that comes there is there will be sentencing on July 11th. And there are many different ways that could go. Trump could get jail time. Uh, he, get, he could get home detention. He could get some kind of sentence that is delayed until the appeal runs its course. Uh, or he, he could get no sentence whatsoever or, or all sorts of different things in between. So Trump got a victory with the Supreme Court yesterday, but he's going to have another uh, bad publicity moment, uh, at least from the normal perspective, uh, when you get when that sentencing comes. And um, I, as far as I can think of it, I mean, you know, it, it's been a momentous week in politics with everything that's happened. Um, as far as I know, there there's nothing that would be on the docket or on any schedule that would have the momentous impact of these things we've seen uh, the last few days. But this is an unpredictable race, and it really feels like anything could happen at any time. Rick, thanks so much. Continuing to keep tabs on all of this for us and every single movement. Appreciate it. You guys.